I welcome you to our uh, course of uh, service today online and it's the first week in June. Believe it or not, we are already six months into the year and uh, for many of us, we would have never thought we would be in the situations that we face today. COVID-19, um, the Black Lives Matter movement in the US and the UK and around the world. Um, there, there's so much happening around us. And uh, at times we, we need to just take a step back and understand as a Christian who we are in Christ. We can get swept away and I think all these uh, things that are happening apart from COVID-19 and, and we know we'll be talking later on about what our plans will be as a church with our Prime Minister announcing yesterday uh, the reopening of church buildings. I want to remind you the church is never been closed. The gospel has been going out with power and authority and uh, this will continue to happen but uh, we, will, we will talk a little bit later on about what might be our plans over the next few weeks. We're going to continue our series on divine direction today and I'm going to complete part three on trusting the process. Trusting the process. And many of you are in new seasons of your life so you are in seasons of your lives that no longer not sure of what the future holds. Let's get into worship. Let's get into praise. I want you to get prepared as families, or if, even if you're on your own with uh, bread and wine, so we can celebrate communion and celebrate the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. We will do that at the coming to the end of our sin. So let's join together in prayer as we welcome God's Spirit. When I say welcome His Spirit, His Spirit is here, but we sensitize our spirits to His presence today. So Father, we want to worship you, we want to thank you, we want to praise you as people join in with us, God. Let there be, Lord, people that be lifted from a place probably of darkness to light. Let those who meet be restored and renewed receive a word in worship and of the word of communion, God, that will be lifted and restored. Let there be healing of our minds, our bodies, our souls, our spirits. Bless us today, God. Father, that our worship, our praise, our words be acceptable to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's join together, Pastor Linda, Heather, Ryan, and Noel as we join the worship.
Jesus God. Well, that's not the God that I know. The God that I know is a, is a God who, who, yes, I know that Christianity has been used as a, a tool of oppression. But can I say, we need to get our mindsets out of the past into the present and the future and relearn. You know, I get passionate about this. Relearn some of the things we have been taught by maybe our colonial masters. The Bible says God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That is worship without boundaries. And even though many of our churches will be reopening our buildings in a week's time, we're not sure whether we're going to rush back into our physical meetings because worship happens wherever you are. It can happen at home. It can happen at your workplace. It can happen in your schools, wherever you are. So as we worship God today, if you're struggling and you're finding yourself in a place of depression and you have critical decisions to make, remember the tagline for the series has been this, the decisions you make today will determine the stories you tell tomorrow. So I reject firmly all the stories that Christianity is built around the structure of a race or a particular kind of Christianity. Being a Jesus follower means that I follow the teachings of Jesus. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the Lord. Blessed are the pure in heart. Join me in prayer before we sing our next worship song. And we're going to sing Light of the World. And truly, God sent His Son Jesus. Sent His Son Jesus. I say that with confidence. So that Jesus will bring light into the darkness. And I'm going to say, that's what we need right now in a world filled with darkness. People not abusing the Bible for their own purposes. I'm going to be a little bit controversial in saying that. But we need Jesus to be the light of the world. So, Father, we come in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name. He was not just a prophet, he was not just a great man. But we proclaim that Jesus was indeed the Son of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. This world is important for those of us who are Jesus followers. We know that there is so much to come. We are preparing in this world for eternity. So I pray, God, that you will lift those who are in depression, out of depression. Heal those whose minds, God, are probably stuck in the past. Bring us into the present. Heal us, body, mind, soul, and spirit. Give us wisdom, God, as we follow the guidance of our Prime Minister, the government, and the Ministry of Health. As we move forward, we pray for those who are abroad, our citizens who are about to come back. Father, we pray that all things will be in place so that people will be repatriated at the right time, in the right season. You are the light of the world, God. Light up our world today in the midst of darkness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship God.
claim that. It's not a crutch. It's not a imaginary thing. We have done that all our lives. I'm 59 years old now, and I can testify of the goodness of God. So, so can you say that one more time, that part? Call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus follow 
no denominational ties. I say that proudly. I'm not Catholic or Pentecostal or Anglican. I'm a Jesus follower. And no one can debate. No one can debate. Absolutely no one. And if you're a Jesus follower, yeah, there are no boundaries. There are no divisions. Jesus preached the gospel of equality, equity, egalitarian approach to life. Read. Some of you may need to go back to the gospels and discover the Jesus you never knew. A book by Philip Yancey, written many years ago. The Jesus I never knew. Rediscover Jesus. Put aside the tag that you're a Christian. Begin to use the tag, I'm a Jesus follower. Because Jesus brought equality to men, women, Jews, Gentiles, slave, and free. Galatians chapter 5. Let me dig quickly into this because we have communion today. Three weeks ago, I started the series of divine direction because Linda and myself, we have been in a season. And I was talking to two pastors last night, um, just asking their advice about this reopening of our church buildings. And I'm saying to them that we are in new seasons of our lives. And the tagline that I used to begin with is this. The decisions you make today will determine the stories you tell tomorrow. The decisions you make today will determine the stories you tell tomorrow. So, so young people, what are the decisions you're making today? Middle-aged, married people, single people, what are the decisions you are making today that will determine the stories you tell tomorrow? That's the tagline, all right? Two weeks ago, I made two statements. God is interested in the who before the do. In other words, before I sit here to preach, before we sing our songs, before we do our worship, God wants you to be the real deal. When the lights go down and no one else is around, who are you really? I guess the one who knows me the best from a human perspective is my dear wife. So if you really want to know who I am, you need to talk to her. Maybe not. <laughs> but God knows who we really are. God knows who we really are. And, and God is, is more interested in the real who before you do. The next point I made is God is interested in the why before the what. So I am kind of fed up with church games and uh, the things that kind of circulate around our church world and our politics. People using a Bible as a as a prop. I know this will offend some, but, but I saw it from that perspective, using it as a prop to, to, to kind of propagate a certain kind of philosophy. We need to know the motives behind. So when I lift the Bible, what are my motives? God knows. I will not judge that one. And then a week or so ago, we talked about asking God for wisdom. If you need wisdom, surround yourself with wise people. And uh, also when you hear from God, you begin to walk in that direction. And then last week, Last week, we started on trusting the process. I shared from Acts chapter 2, verses 20, uh, Acts chapter 2, verses 22 to 24. Paul was comfortable in Ephesus, and suddenly he said, I now feel compelled by the Spirit to go up to Jerusalem. <laughs> and, and, and he completed that, that, that sentence but with an amazing phrase, not knowing, not knowing what will happen there. And the two points I made last week is that you need to recognize the prompting of the Spirit. And I used a Greek phrase, Deo ho pneuma. You remember that? Deo ho pneuma, the pull of the Spirit, the talk of the Spirit, the wind of the Spirit. I want to say to you, when you are in intimate relationship with Father God, there are times when God will tug at you and you will feel the promptings of the Spirit. Paul was comfortable at Ephesus, and yet he felt compelled by the Spirit. And what absolutely blows my mind 
he said, I'm going up to Jerusalem, but I'm not sure what is going to happen to me there. And I made two statements last week that you need to walk in certain uncertainty. Mm. You need to write that down again. But some of you want to take your plan from God. Some of you want to know what is God's plan for your life for the next step. I want to tell you honestly, I don't even know what next week God has for me next week. I see a big plan, a big picture, but I don't see the small steps. And I, I share with you, if you are not living with a little uncertainty, you need to write this one down as well. If you are not living with a little uncertainty, you are not living by faith. Hmm, that's a good word. If you are not living with a little uncertainty, you are not living by faith. And I know some of you want to be so certain. So let me share two points with you today in completing this series on trusting the process. Paul says in the next part of that verse, after he said, I'm going up to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. Listen to the next sentence. I mean, I think everything goes my life when I read it. He says, I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. Paul, wait a minute. I am comfortable in St. Joseph's village. I am comfortable in my heart. I am comfortable pastoring and opposes. You want to tell me I need to move from a comfort zone, not only being uncertain of the future, but the one thing I'm certain about is I'm going to face hardships. Now, that doesn't sound like prosperity gospel, does it? That doesn't sound like what one famous evangelist used to say, something good is going to happen to you. You know, we need to re-examine some of the quotes we have used all our lives. And, sorry, this almost fell. I'm going to, I just pushed it back a little bit. Uh, so, so some of us, we begin to look at our lives. And the third point, so I said, the spirit prompt, the spirit's prompt is certain uncertainty. And if you are going to find divine direction, expect Predictable resistance. Mm. That's a good word. Predictable resistance. Pastor, are you telling me when I'm in the will of God? I thought when I'm in the will of God, there will be a smooth way. Everything will be smooth. There will be no waves. Remember Peter in the boat, in a place of comfort. He sees Jesus walking towards him. Peter says, I'm going to get out of the boat thinking everything will be fine. He begins to walk on water. He gets the exhilarating experience. I'll tell you, once you walk on water, you can't sit in the boat. Ah, hallelujah. I'm getting excited. I'm getting prepared for church again. I mean, in the building. <laughs> I'm going to be in the cell when you come back. <laughs> but, but, but once you have had the exhilaration of walking on water, you can never be a boat sitter anymore. Catch up with. Some will always be willing to sit in the boat, and I respect that. I am not demeaning that. Some will always be happy to be in a place of comfort, a place of predictability. But, but when you are serving God and you are asking for divine direction, I will tell you, sometimes the nudge of the Spirit says, I'm ready to take you to a new place where you will have predictable resistance. Paul says, I'm going up to Jerusalem where I will face hardships and I will face all kinds of challenges. Can I, can I say to you, if you are not ready to face opposition, you're not ready to be used by God. Hmm. That's a hard way. Wish it be. Did you hear me say that? Did you hear me say that? If you are not ready to face opposition, Kingdom Kids teachers who join us sometimes on a Sunday, if you are not ready to face opposition, you are not ready to be used by God. Remember Joseph? Joseph was betrayed by his brothers, dropped into a well or a hole, he was enslaved in Egypt, and then slowly God's plan, plans began to evolve. He moved from the prison to the throne. 
some people get saved and they're born again and they want to re rush straight into the pulpit and, and, and strike me. I have been guilty of that while I was growing up in the church. But I now understand that my years of waiting and training was for a purpose, was for a reason. I consider my life. Can you say today, as you come to the communion table, as you sense divine direction, that you're willing to sacrifice your comfort, sacrifice the things that are there for you, to complete the task that God has given you to do. And in fact, as I close this message, do you know what is God's task to you? Is it, is it just to live another day? Do you live your life by coincidence? Or are you living your life on purpose? I want to tell you, I want to tell you that I'm a person, I could become, I understand my son is similar to me. He likes things in a very ordered way. I don't know if he's listening to me today. You'll take that some of your genetics from your dad. Yes, bless you. Hallelujah. I, I understand you don't like any water on the counter. You like to see it very, very, very dry. So Chloe's out drying up the counter. My daughter, I want to say thanks to my son and my daughter in law, Johan and Nicola, for taking Chloe in for a month while she has been unable to come back to Trinidad. You know, that's what family is for. And uh, even that, I was saying to Linda, I wanted to rush up to the UK so that I, I could probably, you know, give my protection around my daughter. And God was saying, wait. Your son is on the son is there, your daughter in law is there. They can give the covering and the protection. So, so God has a plan and God has a purpose in every detail of your life. And if you're not spending time with Him, if you're not listening to His promptings, your common confidence that Paul had. Paul says, Pastor Greg Rochelle says this is one of his favorite verses. I consider my life worth nothing. My only aim is to finish the race. Linda and I often joke about who's going to go first. She says she wants to be cremated. I said, I'm going to be buried. So I'm saying that publicly. <laughs> I'm not being morbid. I'm not being morbid. But, but if I'm buried and you put a tombstone, everybody listening to me, just put a tombstone. Just say this. He finished the race. That's what... I want to be written. Even if I'm cremated, that's okay. But 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 wherever the, 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 there must be a little plaque somewhere. Please put a little plaque. Say, Claude finished the race. Are you willing to accept divine direction in your life? It's not gonna be easy. You're gonna have to sense the compelling nudge of the spirit. You're going to have to walk in certain uncertainty. You're going to have to face predictable resistance. But when all of that is said and done, you then begin to build uncommon confidence. Pray with me. As our worship team that's prepared to come back and sing a beautiful song that we've been singing for the last few weeks. God, I look to you. In the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of all the, the protesting and all the things that are happening, God, I look to you. So bow your heads with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that we can sense the Spirit's nudge. Father, we, we thank you that we can, we can face certain uncertainty. Father, we thank you that we know that even when we are in your divine plan, there could be predictable or unpredictable resistance. Life will all, all, not always be smooth. And oh God, we thank you as a result of all these experiences, we develop a common confidence that at the end of our lives, it can be said that we finish the race. We ran the race well and we completed the task that you have given us. As our team comes back, God, I look 
to you. new level 
of being able to serve God. With God, your brother, and your mind, with your, together as a family, it's a fabulous opportunity. Hallelujah. As we sing this song, the blood, hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the bread and we thank you for the wine. But as we sing this song in preparation, bless us. Let this be a table of grace today, in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, your blood saved me from the rage of sin. Oh, it washed me clean. Now I can stand, I'm free. Try to 
tell us that, that being a Jesus follower, that we've had some part to play in historical events. You know that traditional Christianity may have had a part to play, but, but being a Jesus follower, we phones and reconfigurates our mind and our thinking to what you preach. We thank you and we praise you being able to celebrate on the table of grace. Father, we bless your name. We bless your name. Hallelujah. We want to thank you for joining us today. I just want to say before we sing our final song, which is a blessing or benediction, um, I think almost certainly we will continue our online service for the next week Sunday. So I just want to say that again. If there's a change of plans, we will send out messages by WhatsApp uh, to our a body of believers here at Anaposis, uh, but but we are not rushed. You know, many people think, well, you know, we have to rush back into our buildings. Uh, we are probably going to give it a week or so, and uh, just be sure that we are well prepared, that we are ready to do the things that we need to do, and uh, and uh, have all the, the the pieces of the puzzle in place. So almost certainly next week Sunday. We will be doing our online service again. And then maybe from the following Sunday, which is Father's Day actually, we will see how the physical distancing will work out uh, in our sanctuary. We want to sing a song. The blessing. The blessing. Hallelujah.
over your lives and your homes in the week ahead, whatever you face. Don't let your shalom be disrupted. Shalom is not just a greeting. Shalom is talking about being complete, being whole, and experiencing the blessings of God. So once again, bear in mind, almost 99% sure we will not yet resume our in-house gathering next week Sunday. We'll give it a week and uh, we probably will start on Father's Day. But uh, if plans change, we'll send out the messages. Bow with me as I pray the final benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord will make His face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. The Lord will lift up His countenance, turn His face towards you, His favor towards you. I prophesy over your homes and your communities and give you shalom, peace, healing, wholeness, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Sunday and a great week ahead.